Okay, I'm just going to make a little video here demonstrating how you can get a Holy Rune drop and a Celadon Urn drop right at the start of the game, uh, so we could end, obviously, um, when using an emulator. Um, some people want to play this game on an emulator. I say that's fine as long as you have, actually have, you know, you do legit own the game and a console to play it on. I just don't want to get my old PS1 and old disc copy of this game out, uh, so I want to play on an emulator. Um, I'm playing on BizHawk emulator and using a very specific BIOS file that I'll talk about in a second. Um, if you've watched any of the currently existing speedruns for this game, um, you'll probably know that they are all run on a PSTV. And unless you have a PSTV, uh, or possibly have bought the game on PlayStation Network, they might run the same, I'm not sure. But unless you have a PSTV, um, if you use if you use a different console to play this game, the RNG will behave differently. Isn't is the music loud? Is the music too loud? I might turn it down just a little bit. Um, yeah, if you don't have a PSTV, possibly PlayStation Network, I'm not sure. Um, the RNG will the game will begin on a completely different RNG value, and you won't be able to uh, simulate any of the uh, RNG manipulations you see in the world record run, for example. Um, so we need to work out our own way of manipulating the RNG inside an emulator based on the values that it starts on. Now, you should be at these early game um, manipulations that I'm going to demonstrate, you should be able to do, regardless, based on my testing anyway, regardless of what emulator you're using, as long as you have a very particular BIOS file loaded into that emulator, you're running the emulator through... Uh, this certain BIOS file. If you use emulators, you'll know what a BIOS file is, so I I'm not going to explain that too much, but the one I'm using is, I think, the most common, the most widespread of the North American PS1 BIOS files. It's scph1001.bin. scph1001. Uh, I think that's a very commonly available North American BIOS file. Um, I... I the... It... Mm, laws about whether I can actually provide links to it or not. Uh, I seem to be a bit of a grey area, I, so I, I'm not going to. Uh, but if you look around, you can find it. It's pretty widely available. Um, so, and the reason I specified that these early game manipulations are you can do regardless of what emulator you're using, uh, I'll, I'll explain more about that at the end. If you want to run... I've, do you have a full run of this game uh, inside BizHawk, the emulator that I'm using? and uh, that I'm probably going to upload or possibly stream at some point. Um, but you'll only be able to uh, do the exact run that I do if you use the emulator that I do. I'll explain more about that at the end. Let's just get on with it. Um, right, so the RNG hasn't advanced at all yet. We're still on the very beginning RNG. All I've done is do the little scene where we have our audience with Barbarossa and I've moved the message scroll speed to fast. That doesn't really affect RNG or anything. It's just pure speed. So the RNG will start advancing as soon as we walk down these steps, so let's do that. And now the rule is, you can't stop moving, you've got to move to the far side of this corridor like that until you trigger this cutscene. Well, little dialogue box really. Uh, once the, When these dialogue boxes are up, the RNG is not advancing. So, uh, we can take as long as we want to skip this uh, dialogue box, and what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the left to speak to Craze, I'm not going to move exactly adjacent to him, I'm going to be one step to the right, but I am going to walk right up to his desk and talk to him, so I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, not like that, <laughs> I messed it up. Uh, so I'm just going to rewind things a little bit there. Uh, let's try that again. There, like that. Uh, and it's the number of steps you take is very important here, because the RNG is advancing once per frame per... Uh, NPC on screen. All the NPCs that move about randomly is determined by RNG, so the RNG is advancing real, real fast on this screen because there's like five uh, NPCs that randomly move. So once per frame times five. Um, so the number of steps you take is very important. If you take one extra step, that can really uh, uh, push the RNG way forward to the point where you miss where we're aiming for. Um, so we do that. So now obviously the orange is paused again, we've got this little text box up, and on our way back I'm gonna, I'm holding right to walk back to Tio, and I'm gonna take one little step down, then I'm gonna use the corner of that wall to nudge me down the second step. So I'm gonna skip this, what's my name? Okay, like this. Ha! 
Oh my god. Okay, pressure of recording. Uh, just gonna rewind, <laughs> rewind that, have another go. There, like that. Um, okay, so now we can skip through this. And now, if you watch the PSTV run, the way they work out what frame they're on at this point, because you can't um, you can't time that speaking with Craze perf like frame perfectly because uh, you can't press confirm and speak to Craze at exactly the right a frame perfect execution like that. Um, you're going to be within a certain range of um, RNG seeds. And the way on the PSTV, the way they work out which frame they're on at this point is by what direction all the NPCs in this room and I think the next room are facing. Well, uh, for this run, they're always facing the same direction, <laughs> so we can't use that. Um, so uh, so uh, let's just skip through this and we'll follow Tia. So they're, they're always facing, that top guy's facing left, those two ladies are always facing down. Um, these guys are all always facing down and... Uh, so, how do we know which frame we've landed on? Well, we don't skip this text, and we use the birds. In fact, I'm just going to pause the emulator for a second there. So, there are a bunch of birds on the ground in Gregminster. And, if you look over at my notes on the left of the screen here, uh, you'll see the column, the A column on the left, uh, says for, uh, sorry the, the notes aren't really very readable if anyone's actually interested in this I might rewrite these notes so they're a little more readable and don't look quite so just weirdly coded and esoteric um, but the first bird column on the left describes how the first bird that appears on screen how it moves so left up down right um, or whatever and then from that we can determine which uh, RNG frame we're on so how many steps we need to take on the way out of Gregminster in order to land on the fights we need to land on. So let's unpause. We don't skip that Gregminster test. Look carefully at this bird. All right, we've got left, right, up. Uh, left, right, up. Where's that? Okay, so that's th the like uh, row 12 there. Um, so um, you see that row 12, which says L-R-U dash. The little dash means like a sort of pause in the bird's movement. So it was like left, right, up little pause and then looking along column b says green man that these uh these columns refer to i'm probably just going to speed things up a little bit here because the rng is not advancing during this whole scene um these colored columns refer to how the npcs will move once we're outside and uh that's just kind of a secondary reference point so that i can make sure as I'm walking through Gregminster I can just check where the NPCs are moving just to make sure that I am actually on the frame I think I'm on. To be honest, uh, I've done this enough times now that I know that just looking at the way the bird moves is accurate. Uh, so I don't even bother looking at that anymore. So I'll probably remove them from the notes uh, if I reconfigure them so that they can make sense to other people. Uh, and then the E column that says path uh, Row 12, the left, right, up bird movement, is left plus 2. So what does that mean? That refers to the... Okay, I'm just going to pause for a second. That refers to the archway at the exit of Gregminster. That means we want to align ourselves to the left side of it and then take two more steps from that. So, um, that means, so I'm going to walk over to the left of that archway and then two steps back to the middle. Now, the path we take is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit long and winding because we need to advance the RNG. And we're not going to scare the birds away either. We need to advance the RNG quite a lot to get it to the place we need to be at. Uh, so I'll show you what that looks like now. Walk to the right. Down there. And to the left. And then... Ah, shit. Okay, I took one too many steps there. Um, yeah, it must be pressure of recording. I usually get this right. I've, I think I've messed up every step of this so far. Um, but it's not actually that hard. It might take a little bit of practice to get each step uh, right. The talking to Craze and then the path through Gregminster. Uh, I usually don't mess it up this much, but it's probably just because I'm trying to record a video. Um, so I'll show you that path again. There's, If you want to look at the NPCs, the green man, the... Um, soldier who stood right outside the door 
on column uh, row 12 there is down as S, which means still. Uh, the blue man, the guy dressed in blue down the bottom right of the screen, uh, D, so he's going to move down. The woman who we're going to see, uh, the woman dressed in orange, is going to move to the right. And then we need to move along to the left of the entrance archway plus two steps. Uh, okay, right, let's let's try that again. And this step here on the wall is tricky because you don't want to walk into the... There you go, the blue guy moved down. And this orange woman is going to move to the right. Okay, so now we're on the left. Two steps to the middle, there we go. So what I was referring to as I'm just is the this step here we don't want to walk into the wall at all i think i may have just then um and the reason being because if you want to just walk up to the wall and then down don't walk into the wall at all because that's more frames spent in gregminster and uh, the rng will go past where you need it to be so to the right down along the wall blue guy moves down Orange one moves to the right, align to the left, and then two steps. Bah, didn't take enough steps back to the middle. Okay, right. We'll get onto the world map business in just a second. This video is turning out to be longer than I meant it to, just because I keep messing it up. There we go. Right, so. Now, the next column, F, WM steps, world map steps, eight. So we should have eight steps until our first battle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we go. Uh, so now this is the fight we're gonna get Celadon earned from. Uh, it's good. We need to run three times. Uh, again, the code down in um, row 17 where it describes the actions for this battle is uh, almost nonsensical so I'll try and um, retype that up a little bit if anyone is interested to um, so that it makes more sense uh, so we've done three runs and now we're going to have McDoll attack the first one Gremio and Pan defend Cleo attack the first one and Te uh, yeah, Ted is going to medicine Gremio so this is actually a five turn fight it doesn't feel like the length of a five turn fight because the first three turns are just running, but still, it's, it's longer than I'd like it to be, but this is the best I could get. Uh, and then we're going to free will the last turn. Okay, and McDowell gets good stack, uh, magic growth there, and uh, Cleo gets good magic growth, and we get question mark pot, which is Celadon Urn. Okay, now we've got a menu to do, and you, so you can see uh, row 18 says swap McD and G, Pan and Cleo, Med McD. I uh, hope that makes sense. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to formation, we're going to swap McDoll and Gremio, swap Pan and Cleo, and then we're going to use Medicine and McDoll. Uh, I'm going to do the menu a little bit slower than I would usually do it, so you can see what I'm doing. Formation, one, two, boom, boom, and Medicine, McDoll, like that. Uh, then I think we're like six or seven steps away from the next fight. Six. Six steps away from the next fight, which is this. And we want to go unite uh, the Red Soldier Ant, defend, defend with McDonald and Cleo, and have Ted attack the first Mosquito. Uh, then we want to go unite uh, the first mosquito, defend, defend, and have Ted attack the second one. Ted should always crit here. And there we go. And again, we get decent stack magic growth on McDowell, decent magic growth on uh, Cleo, and the others don't really matter too much. Um, and we got Holy Crystal there. Um, okay, so, what else do I have to say? If you would, I usually, just looking at uh, the, the the notes here on the left, uh, you might see some have uh, ants in brackets, like uh, rows 8 and 9 and row 15. So if I land on rows 8 and 9, so if the first bird that I see goes left, left, down, or left, down, down, like rows 8 and 9, that means that the path I have to take is left plus one, so I go take the same path I did, 
I go align myself to the left of the archway on the exit to Gregminster and then take one step back into the middle. Uh, and that's as close as I can get the RNG to land uh, to the fights I need. To the fights uh, we need to get these drops. But then we have to take 13 steps to get a battle with which then lands us in a battle with two soldier ants. We then have to bribe those soldier ants and take another 18 steps in order to get the first battle with those three bonbons. To be honest, I usually just restart when I land on the, those values because it's just too much of a setback for a run um, early game. Uh, unless I've, you know, just <laughs> done too many restart restarts already and I'm sick of it. But mostly I just restart when I get those values because, uh, it's yeah, it just takes too long. Um... You might see in rows, was it three, four, and five? The path is L and back to R plus one. So for that, that means I would walk all the way over to the left of the archway. Um, I would walk through it, and then I'll go back until I'm aligned with the right of the archway, and then take one further step than that, and then I'll have eight world map world map steps uh, to get to the bonbons. And then middle plus one is you just you just walk till you hit the middle and then take one further step from that. And then you'll go to the world map and have 18 steps before you hit the uh, bonbons. Uh, so that's that really. And as I said, these manips should work regardless of what emulator you're using. As long as you're using that BIOS file that I mentioned. SP whatever it is. Uh, SCPH1001. Um... However, I would say, I have a full run of this game, I think I mentioned earlier, and I am going to upload it, possibly stream it at some point. And if you want to follow along with the whole run, my testing suggests that you will need to use the same emulator as me. Because although, regardless of what emulator you're using, as long as you're using this BIOS file, the game will start on the same RNG value, so you'll be able to do these early game manips just fine. As soon as you hit an in-game RNG reset value, i.e. you fly to Magician's Island, or you trigger Marco's Cup game, or have any of the uh, war battles, the value that the RNG resets to will be different depending on what emulator you're using, even if you're using the same BIOS file. Well, which seems strange to me, I don't fully understand it, but that's what my testing suggests. Uh, so, my full run is going to be in Bizhawk, Using that emulator, that the uh, sorry, that BIOS file that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, I look forward to that soon. If anyone uh, is watching or cares, <laughs> um, I hope someone is able to get some use out of this. Uh, yeah, all the best. Happy speed running. <laughs>